And we're with Peter Farrell from ResMed. Thanks for taking your time. I Pleasure, appreciate Roger. it. Nice Pleasure. to see you again. Yep. Now, uh, ResMed, a huge San Diego company, a huge international company. Yep. How big? Um, Six point eight billion in market cap, listed on the New York Stock Exchange. About one point five billion in revenues, and we make about twenty percent net income to revenue. So it's fairly profitable. Well, that's what I would say so. Shareholders mm. happy. They are. We've had seventy three <laughs> consecutive record quarters since we went public. Uh, originally, so um, you know, I mean, at some point maybe you hit the wall, but we're we're quite happy. Not yet. Not yet. Now you're all over the world. Yes. How many countries? Um, about a hundred, uh, but in reality, it's 55% of the Americas, which includes Canada and, and Latin America, most of which is the U.S. 90% of that plus is the U.S. And then we have Germany and France that add another, roughly another uh, 25%. So. Roughly, we've got nearly 80% in three countries, so we've got to get that right. So basically, the other 97, we don't give a damn about. Not true. Not true. Not true. But obviously, true. we're growing nicely in Sweden yeah. and India and Japan and, uh, and China. So and the product line has to do with sleep disorders. Correct. And, uh, well, actually, the company's name, ResMed, is short for respiratory medicine. Ah. And so, but we're, in, we're really in sleep disordered breathing and respiratory care, and uh, mostly the non acute, uh, so home ventilation, if you like, but it's the whole spectrum of sleep disorder breathing from regular snoring to which most people would have heard about, I assume, at this, at this stage, and that's sleep apnea, which actually is a treatable disorder because it kills you if you don't treat it. How did you come across this mask, this sleep apnea mask? This is kind of a story, isn't it? Uh, well, it is. Uh, yeah, I used to be an academic and uh, went to the dark side, and I joined a company called Baxter Healthcare. And I actually went to set up and run their R&D in Japan. So I actually lived in Japan for a while, ran Baxter's R&D there for three years, and they said to me, look, why don't you look around the Asia-Pacific region for low-hanging fruit, basically uh, opportunities that Baxter's financial and marketing muscle could take to world markets. So we were hunting around. We were in a lot of gene jockey stuff, but um, one of the guys working for me said, there's this guy at the University of Sydney Medical School treating snoring sickness with a reverse vacuum cleaner. And I thought the guy was nuts. I rolled on my back like a sprayed cockroach, actually. Um, <laughs> because a reverse vacuum cleaner sounds funny. It sounds crazy. So I went to see the guy, and it, it's a long story, and I'll, I'll, I'll shorten it, but he said, look, this is a serious disorder. And he said, in fact, all, we, all we're doing is taking room temperature air, like a reverse vacuum cleaner, into this little box, bringing the air in. We've got a filter to keep out cockroaches. And then we put it up the, the nose. And you wear a nasal mask. And it splints up in the airway and stops. So the snoring, of course, we're aware of where you yeah. And then if you go from that to that's an apnea. Yeah. And it's not good for you because the yeah. oxygen levels drop, the carbon dioxide levels come up. And uh, at some point, the brain uh, gets a signal that if you don't uh, open up your airway, you're dead, mate. So you, uh, then there's Not a good. stentorian snoring breath. Yeah. And, um, and this stops it. This stops it. And really, it's quite simple. It's about 1% of atmospheric pressure. I mean, you wonder why the government uh, uh, is even in this at all, because it's safer than an aspirin. In fact, you probably wouldn't even get aspirin through the FDA today. No. Um, but uh, it's perfectly safe, and in fact, you could argue that prophylactically everybody should have it. That would be great for our business. Uh, <laughs> but we have a couple of guys on the board that use it for jet lag. So really yeah. what, it, what it does is it stops any instability of the upper airway. Right. And the pressure is, as I say, 1% of atmospheric pressure. So basically the only way you can get injured by one of our devices is to pick it up and smash somebody over the head with it. So that it's, a, it's good. a good space. It wouldn't be good. No. But that's a good space to be. Now, you're going to interact. You talked about France, Germany, United States, and right. most of the business. Um, you're going to interact with government health programs. Yes. Uh, your reimbursement Sadly. and all that stuff. How do you, because you're an entrepreneur. You're, you're, the, you're, a, you're kind of a unique person. You're, you've got the academic background, the science background, and right. you've got the business background. Yes. And you're an entrepreneur, and you've built this huge company. Uh, but you have to interact with, with socialist bureaucrats. How's that? Yeah, that's, uh, that's a challenge. Um, you know, and, and let me say something about entrepreneurship. A lot of people, uh, even in business schools today, assume that it's a big risk taking. If you're inside the tent looking out and you're not thinking of it as a risk, you're thinking of it as an opportunity. So really right. it's opportunity grasping. A lot of people think risk. It's only a risk if you're outside the tent looking in and it looks nuts. But anyway, um, yes, we, we have to deal with government bureaucrats. I mean, it is, it is a fact of, of life. Right. Now, you're interacting as a business with mm -hmm. Obamacare for your, employee, for your employees. 
in terms of Obamacare for your product. Let's take employees first. What impact is Obamacare having on your company? Well, I mean, the whole thing, the whole of Obamacare, I mean, it, it, it sounds so great on paper, you know, everybody gets covered and so forth. But we've got a broken system, which is Medicare and Medicaid. And instead of reforming Medicare and Medicaid, which Lyndon Johnson started to help everybody out, right. we've got a broken system there, um, very bureaucratic. And on top of that, we, we say, OK, now you've got to treat everybody. Now, but that's going to save money. I mean, of course, it's nonsense. It's complete and utter garbage. It will never save money. It's going to be hugely expensive. It probably won't be implemented totally the way it is. But part of Obamacare is there's a tax on medical devices of 2.3%. Which affects you. On revenues. Yeah. Revenues. Excise tax. Right. I mean, it's, it's nuts. Yeah. Not profit, revenues. So if you, if you are in the uh, life sciences area and you want to start a company, you have some revenues but no profit, but you're still paying this tax. It's, it's anti-innovation, anti and innovation only occurs when somebody writes a check. I mean, people talk about creativity, imagination. Innovation only occurs when the marketplace anoints it. Now, it's, it's going to make everything, starting companies will be tougher and if, you're in the, if you're in the device area.